Whether you like it or not, the 1980s were the golden years for video games. Games like Pac-Man and Centipede and Donkey Kong were making their way into arcades all around the world, and out of all these games released in the decade, Asteroids probably has to be my favourite. Okay, it, it wasn't released quite in 1980s, but it's so close. There's something about the way the ship controls like it's in space even though it was programmed 40 years ago before the days of physics engines that amazes me. Today I'm setting myself the challenge to make asteroids under these conditions. One, I must use C++, a language that I'm in no way experienced with. Two, I must code all of the logic by myself, I can't search anything related to asteroids besides gameplay. And three, I have to hard code all of the physics and this means no physics libraries at all. That last one is going to be very difficult. This is going to be the most difficult programming challenge I've ever done, so without further ado, let's begin. The multimedia library I went with was SFML. If you don't know, a multimedia library is basically a way to easily control common game functions, such as creating and rendering to a window. The difference between this and, say, Unity is that SFML is only going to help with the really low-level stuff, whereas we are left to do the rest on our own, for example, loading textures or implementing physics. Now because this library is pretty new to me, I'm going to start out by creating one of these little like sorting algorithm visualizers that you may have seen on YouTube. Setting things up in VS Code is actually really easy thanks to this guy's GitHub repo. It has all the build tasks and such pre-configured, so I don't have to play around with any commands when I want to build. Soon enough, I got this first window rendering and loaded a sprite onto the screen. Then I got some blocks to display using this little snippet of code. And soon enough, we got the bubble sort working, however inefficient it may be. At this point, I'd learned the basics of the library and I was pretty confident that I could move on to Asteroids. The first thing I did was work on the player sprite in Illustrator. And after a bit of tweaking, I ended up with this little triangle. I loaded it into the game and next I encountered the first problem of which many more would come. When centering the player, you can see it's not quite in the center. This is because in SFML, sprites have their 0, zero coordinate in the top left by default. I failed to see this for a while, but eventually solved it by subtracting half of the player's width and placing the player there. Although later I realized that you can just center the sprite's origin, which is obviously the better way of doing it, and I switched to that. Scaling down the player slightly, I moved on to playing around with the keyboard inputs and managed to get the console to print each time a key is pressed. I used this in conjunction with a rotate function to allow our ship to move. This worked fine, but you can see how the ship is sometimes faster and stuttering around. This is because the game currently has no delta time. Delta time allows us to move stuff independent of the frame rate. So what that basically means is, let's define some speed variable and set it equal to 10. If our game is running at 5 FPS, this means in one second we will move 50 units. However, if our game is running at 60 FPS, we'll move 600 units a second. This is an issue. Let's try fixing this by multiplying our speed by the time since the last frame. Now a game running at 5 FPS will travel 10 units per second, and a game running at 60 FPS will travel 10 units per second. This time since last frame is delta time and it's what we need to solve our bug. This was surprisingly easy to implement though and I got it working pretty quickly. And there we have it, smooth rotations. Next up is movement towards the direction of the player's rotation. I'm not going to explain how this works because there is a lot of geometry and trigonometry based knowledge required and it would take me a whole video to explain the basics to build it up to that. So I'll just show you the code. Onto the actual movement code itself, this was by far the hardest thing to implement as I'm pretty much coding the physics by hand. The approach I went with was to have a gain value that increases when holding forward and decreases otherwise. The gain value increasing worked like a charm, however the decreasing or drag of the ship was incredibly frustrating to get working. Normalization came in clutch though and I finally after about 4 or 5 hours of coding got a playable ship. Another thing that is really easy to implement is screen wrapping. At first I thought I'd have to fix the velocities but fortunately it worked first try. Now onto bullets. The bullets are pretty basic to be honest. There's a bullet class that I instantiate when conditions are met, basically when we're pressing the fire button and it's been a certain amount of time since the last bullet. And then this bullet moves based on the ship's direction when it was fired. This is then set in the constructor. I did have a little bit of trouble at one point and made this though. And <laughs> I genuinely could not recreate this if I tried so Kudos to the bullet class. This was kind of a wake up call though to how messy the code was and I decided to spend about an hour rewriting everything so it was object oriented. Anyway, here's the bullets working. Next, I added asteroids to the game. I started out by making the initial sprite and the class for the asteroids. I quickly got them set up spawning. Next, I made it so they choose a random position around the edge of the screen to spawn at. 
Then I got the asteroids wrapping around the screen just like the player. So now we have basic asteroids, the next thing to do is to implement the smaller asteroids. This is pretty easy though. All I need to do is detect collisions, destroy the big asteroids and instantiate two smaller asteroids that are tagged as level 2 asteroids. A level 2 asteroid will not split up and instead just die. And there we have it, Th that is asteroids. Some final touches with some sound effects and here is the finished game. This video took me so long to make so I'm sorry it's been so long. I do have plans to work on something more dev-like though for my next video. Maybe it's Gatling, maybe it's not. I'll announce it in my Discord later tonight, so make sure you join that in the description. And thanks for watching.